starting the day off with a fill up, a fuel fill up. And we're juicing. Holy crap. BJ's taking our temporary tag off that expired July 6th. You know, I actually woke up in the middle of the night thinking about having to move this trailer today and wondering if you had lost this. Yeah, it was in the, it was in the trailer the whole time. Go ahead and let the tractor start warming up while we're filling up. So if you're retired. And then we'll get back cut. So we got that patch there, that patch there, and then that patch on the other side of this tree. And then we'll be done. Done for the day. Depending on how long this drill stays here, we might do another 30 acres. Do a quick walk around. I think we're good. Last night I did drag up a little bit, but that was my fault. I accidentally backed up with this thing in the ground. So I just want to double check, but I think we're good. All right, let's hop in and cover some ground. Now when we get done over here, we're going to join dad, my brother, and we're going to run some more beans. And yeah, hopefully we can knock out some bean acres before this next rain moves in. My drill fired up here this morning. Uh, open our ISO screen, open this screen. Uh, go to this, no, go to this. Turn our section control to automatic. So it's auto there now, we're good. Our fan fired up, our downforce. And turn our intelligent ag system on. Come on, connect. You can do it. We'll prime the planter. Seat fell out, so that's good. All right, I'm going to start pulling out of bin number two. Bin number one has about two or three, eh, maybe five acres of seed left. I don't have my tender here. We're trying to run this drill pretty dry. So basically when I run out on, of seed with number two, I will switch to number one, call my brother, have him bring me some seed. That should give him enough time to get here. That's how we're going to use that dual bin today. Yeah, cross here, a little bit muddy. This tractor and drill are going to be a little bit muddy. Oh wow. There's a gravel bottom in this crossing, so we'll be fine, but it's a little soupy. A little soupy. Might be a bit moist. Still a lot of do on. Intelligent Ag System is telling me I have a unit plug. It could just, I'm thinking it's probably because it's so damp out here still. So I don't think it's coming from the drill, but uh, maybe that'll fix our situation here. We can get back to seeding. Just about done with this little field here. If you're new to the channel, we have a lot of construction equipment. We have a dozer, an excavator, front end loader, off-road truck, lots of heavy equipment. And a lot of people ask, why do we have such equipment as a farm? If you notice, our farm ground is surrounded by forests, trees, stuff like that. So that's why we have it. For example, this field right here that we're in, was it, when was that, about 10 years ago, it was a forest. So using that equipment, we were able to reclaim it as farm ground. It was, it was farm ground that the previous owner had let grow up. And uh, yeah, that's why we have that equipment. So while it may not get used every day, it is all paid for itself. That and lots of walking back and forth, picking up roots. There's about 40 acres right here that we reclaimed about 10 years ago. And yeah, lots of walking back and forth. Back through the stinky mud we go. So we're starting to run out on box number two. You can see the units trailing off. So I'm gonna come up here and boom. And now we should be back in good shape. There we go. So we have about two or three acres of seed left. Which is convenient because we have about two or three acres left. We put enough seed in to do five acres. There's four acres up here that I'm gonna do. And then dad's gonna come over and fill in. A, I had to go around about an acre up here if there's a wet spot. Had a sinkhole in it. Dad's gonna go fill that in and I'll plant it. There'll still be some wheat in this drill, but it'll be pretty close to empty. 
Here goes Dad. Off to fix the sinkhole. It's a little bumpy. It's a little bumpy. Okay, let's go. Let's go find the combines. Need some lunch. That corn's still a little green. Dad, he is in the bottom field below this. He's just getting started on it. Uh, my combine is already sitting there hooked up. There's only like four or five acres left, so I'm going to go combine those and then join him in that field down there. Larry's sitting there waiting on me, so hurry up and knock us out. Hey, it's Friday, everybody. We're back at it. Down the bottom, we're 70 acres. Ryan's got there's about three acres up on the top of the hill. He's going to do that. There's like pretty good beans at the bottom. Plan, I can tell they're red. All right, I got an issue out there. You can see my draper belt. It's, it quit spinning on this side, start piling up beans, and uh, that's what's going on. So we need to get out and take a look at that. Now we do have our safety latch down on the feeder house cylinders, so we are being safe while we're under this header. Guys, what happened, part of the, the on the bottom side of this belt, this piece of it started to cut and come apart. And now it's wedged up in here. And it's tore this belt pretty far down here. There's a gash out of it. Pretty much the whole, or probably about a quarter of the length of that belt. Say this draper belt's probably trashed. <sighs> On the previous videos, we've had some issues with this combine. This is my combine getting it up and going. Some people said, well, these combines are junk or yada, yada, yada. One thing about, only about this draper head, this draper head's paid for and it's old. This draper head is 10 years old. This combine is, this is its seventh season. So breakdowns are going to happen. It's the most frustrating when breakdowns happen on new equipment or equipment you're still paying for. But this is paid for. Hey, I think we're making some progress. All right, we are going to put the head back down, try to cut off that piece of belt that had come loose, and see if we can get the head to engage and spin around where we can find where the end of that, that length of belt that's unraveled is. The crappy thing is that draper belt's not that old. Two years, maybe? I think he's gonna need a bigger hammer story of his life. Okay, so the belt turns again. That is good. This belt, we'll probably be able to run this belt today, but that belt's going to have to be replaced. Uh, it'll eventually just keep coming apart is my guess, but hopefully we can get by today. It's supposed to rain um, quite a bit tomorrow afternoon, so hopefully we can use this combine today and tomorrow. And then probably the rest of harvest till that belt completely comes apart because that's how we roll. Well, this seems like a good idea. All right, we might be back in business. Right now, Dad and my brother, they're just looking at it to make sure nothing's going to catch. We had a sharp point that the belt rides on, we think is what caused it. We think that's what caused that to slice up a little bit. While I was under the head, I noticed a couple of grease fittings that I missed earlier, so we're gonna get those real quick. Okay, well that's frustrating, but now we're back to it. Let's see how many tools we can combine. I'm sure we left something on that draper head. Run through the machine and get on with our day. I hope not. Sarcasm, 100%. But we're gonna finish this patch here um, and then check it. See if we can get by today or if I need to go after a belt today before they close. Well, it's still on the machine, so I guess that's good. All right, now down to the big field. I don't know if you can tell, but there's two different kinds of beans right here. 
This field had a lot of replant in it. This, I replanted this with a Fent Momentum. I planted the first planting with our case planter, but we had to come in, the river got out, all these low areas, they, they drowned it out. So we might have a couple maturities, but I'll take the yield. The yield will work. Definitely worth the replant. Most all of these beans did go underwater. If you look back in our spring videos, we walked this field with Bushel Billy right after the flood. Uh, Bushel Billy is my buddy from Instagram, so check his Instagram account out if you got one. But we walked these fields and some of these were looking pretty bad. We were really questioning whether or not they were going to make it. Well, they made it. Now they're yielding 80 bushels, so not bad. These are Seek and Solon's 8379X. So that's a 3.7 maturity bean. And like I said, they all went underwater right after they were planted and we were really questioning whether or not they were going to make it and they they made it all right guys change plans i am going after some parts so whenever we were working on that belt i noticed that there was a bearing that looked like it could be out and it is uh, i ran that pass and i got out and checked it and i uh, burnt the tip of my finger pretty good so i am going to get a bearing but we cannot risk a fire and run that with that bearing being out like that that shaft is extremely hot this dust is very dry this shaft's very dry so i'm going after bearing good afternoon folks we are picking beans today Shell shelling beans harvesting meat cutting be uh, whatever whatever you do with beans combining beans well, if you can see down through there but we have one nice Klaus lexion 740 combine running right in front of us and on down the way there, on the other side of that dust, we have another Kloss Lexion Combine not doing anything. But I figured I'd take a minute to talk to you about um, you know, Kurt Ace and just what's going on right here on this screen. A little bit of a glare is what's going on. Uh, sorry if that's bad, guys. Um, so on the left side of the monitor here, you see the nice color-coded little little area there and that is a yield map so dark green is good um, orange down here not so much um, basically a map full of dark green and everybody on brown farms is happy a map full of orange and red and we're probably not doing so much happiness um, at the top it'll show me what combine is is what combines are running as you can see dad is currently running he's in a bean crop uh, right now that's like the spot yield for where he's at um, so not great not terrible and then that's the moisture of what he's currently running so kind of handy to sit there to be able to see that kind of stuff helps us in a lot of ways basically determine storage strategy and you know how many trucks we need to be brought to this field feels average and higher or lower than what we anticipated and maybe we need to adjust how many trucks and, and how long we're going to be here and that kind of thing but here in a minute i'll switch over to the the gps navigation screen and let you guys take a look at that and uh, i'll be right back all right so dad's got the spout out beacon's not on but apparently he's ready to offload some beans i'll show you how cardace works here as we pull up alongside that is a nav map basically those are all ab gps lines you see the moving red line that is my guidance line and at the top it tells you how close the nose of the tractor is to being on that line uh, you have to be within five feet and then i can engage the tractor's guidance system and match my speed and off we go we can flip this screen and see that dad's running at 3.4 miles per hour i'm running at 3.3 if he wants to speed up he'll tell me if not we'll just cruise along right now and load on the go without worrying about hitting me me swerving and hitting him all we got to do is match speeds all right so i was sent on a mission to see how to get this bearing out of here what we're going to have to do to get this bearing out of here well i would say if he ran it another three or four more rounds it would just fall on out oh my give the watt one quick round of window shopping And we actually have to go up the road to a different dealership. Our, our head is a McDonald head. 
So it's not exactly a uh, Agco head or a Kloss head. So several dealerships have parts for that. There is another uh, McDonald dealers right up the road. So go get a bearing for it up there. All right, just getting back to the field. Dad has like 15 acres left. And the more I look at this bearing, I'm going to need either a puller or a torch to get that off of there. So I'm going to unhook, take this thing over to the shop. Dad's moving his combine over there tonight anyways. We're going to do a field close to the house in the morning. So I'm going to hook this up, try to get over there before dark, and then hopefully we can get that thing pulled off there in the morning. Good times, good times. Now that is a 50 hour fitting. It was greased before we started the first day. Um, right before we started, uh, we greased the bottom of this head. So uh, it's been out in the last like 10 hours, I would say. Yeah, it's a good thing we caught that. Really, that belt giving us fits was actually, uh, it probably saved a fire, I would imagine. So sometimes things that make you mad are a blessing in disguise, I guess. Really sucks because these beans are good and they're, they're, it's fun to harvest good soybeans. They're cutting easy, they're yielding good, good stuff. And now I gotta harvest five acres of them. We're gonna take the head over first, then I'm gonna bring the pickup back so Dad can take his head or somebody can. And then I'm going to bring my combine back over there while they're finishing this. My wife is going to give me an escort for the combine. Let's get to it. Pretty sure that my bowels know I'm going to be home earlier tonight. And the other uh, farmers know what I'm talking about. 40 may not seem like much, but pulling a header wagon that isn't a high speed header wagon, that's pretty freaking fast. Seems like these all wheel steer carts, they, uh, you're able to pull them a little bit faster. I like that. Now our regular header cart, uh, we can usually pull it about 30 miles an hour max. All right, that 70 acres is done. So like I said, we're moving all the machines out of here tonight. That way they'll be ready to go in the morning after we fix my combine, of course. Go ahead and unhook dad's combine for him so he don't have to get out. And that's how you make sure you're the favorite. Convoy's rolling out. I don't know if you can see him in the mirror there, but Dad and BJ are behind me. Uh, I'd say Larry's probably, actually I don't know where Larry is. He might be at the elevator still. Look, Brian, getting kind of close to that mailbox back here. Now while we were moving, we are wearing seat belts. That's new for us. We usually don't wear seat belts. I didn't even realize combines had seat belts for a long time. But after seeing Griggs Farms accident, um, if you're not familiar with that fella, I believe the corn head popped off while he was going down the road and uh, threw him through the windshield. So I didn't realize those windshields were, were that easy to break, I guess. Gets the guy thinking, everybody stay safe. Getting a little crowded around here. Hey Chet, can I borrow your shop? I got a draper head I need to fix. Well, there's not enough room for us all to park in a building tonight, but I'm at least gonna park facing east that way. Uh, this, the windshield at least get the dew burn off of it, maybe. Not gonna be cold enough to frost. Well guys, that's it for this one. Not the most productive day, really. We harvested like 85 acres of soybeans with two combines, but you have days like that. Uh, this time it wasn't the combines, it was the head. That is our oldest head, so it's starting to show its age. But that's farming, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, check the links in the description, and we'll see you in the next one. Just because no one's filmed you today, buddy. Hi, Squish. Nummy, 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 nummy. <laughs>